Hello, everybody. Um, today we're going to be speaking to Al Chasen, and we're going to talk about ArtScope and its origins and the interesting information about it. My name is Michelle Cacavano, and I'm also a uh, member of ArtScope. So Al and I have been doing things together for a while now. So um, I would just like to tell you that we have a surprise for you at the end of our um, interview. And I haven't seen it, but I'm going to hang around with uh, our viewers to watch. So please, even when we finish the interview, if you would just hang out for a little bit longer so you can see the surprise. OK, so uh, for five years, ArtScope has been an important addition to life at Woodland Pond. Can you tell us a little bit about how it all started? Yeah, we were living uh, in New Jersey at the time, and I was attending uh, classes at the, uh, the local community college. Um, I was producing a lot of art, and I was exhibiting at various places locally. Um, and we had an organization with our, within our development of painters, photographers, and it was pretty well organized. Um, but before moving to Woodland Pond, uh, Sylvia and I had um, lunch with uh, Trina and uh, Steffi Lauer. Um, I wanted to get a sense of what the art climate was at Woodland Pond. Sure. And um, um, we had a very interesting uh, lunch with them. I was convinced that there was this was a place to go to. Um, there were lots of painters here, they told me, but there was no organization. So I, uh, once we moved in, I called um, Sarah Hull, and um, she gave me the names of the, uh, I guess it was about a half dozen or so painters um, in the place. And um, I contacted them, and it turned out there were a lot more, uh, and we called a meeting. And um, at the meeting, I think there were about 16 or 17 of us, um, we agreed to, to start a formal group and um, which would include photographers, uh, which we hadn't intended to do, but Halima Hassan was one of the people who was at the meeting and Halima was a photographer. So we said, yeah, we think it'd be a good idea to expand the group. Um, since it was my idea, I was um, volunteered to be chairman. <laughs> That's one of the things you never do when you move into a place, you never volunteer something because you're it, okay? So I agreed, but only if I had a co-chair. And uh, Irene Fitzgerald uh, agreed. And um, I think at that meeting, Irene came up with the name Artscope. And um, as we you know, proceeded through the years, uh, Irene took on the responsibility of um, putting together videos of artists, photographers, and other art-centric um, uh, interests um, and we did that on almost a monthly basis. Um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about how you go about arranging for the exhibit. Yeah, um, you know, before all this happened, <laughs> this being the pandemic, um, Irene and I would get together and we'd plan out for months in advance. Um, and then we would... Um, sit down with Gretchen and um, find out what dates were available for us to put on an opening reception and then, you know, the show itself. Um, at first, we were doing it monthly. That got to be an enormous job. So we expanded exhibits to about six weeks, um, six weeks each. Um, we'd schedule the painters, the photographers, the outside creatives, um, all those that we felt we have a terrific show um, with, um, including the uh, Woodland Pond staff, uh, Mira Fink and her watercolor painters, a tremendous variety. Um, is there a lot of coordination involved in putting together a show like this? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Um, I, I ask all the exhibitors to um, send me images of maybe two of the pieces that they're gonna have in the show. Um, send it to me email. Um, if they don't have a picture, then Larry Randall goes and he takes pictures of, of the work. He's been a terrific help. Um, then I put together a promotion for um, Connected Living. 
In the early days, there was no connected living, so I didn't have to worry about that. Uh, so I put together a, a promotion which includes the images, um, copy describing the, um, the exhibit, um, the date of the opening um, reception. Um, then I send the information to Gretchen for the, um, for the newsletter, to um, Sarah Hull for the, um, the Chanticleer, and then I remind once or twice all the um, exhibitors for label information so we could put that together and affix the label next to their, uh, their work. I get in touch with the hanging committee, which consists of Tom Natoli, Larry Randall, and Bill Barbash. Um, it would be no hanging without them, uh, telling them about the dates and are they available. And then I confirm with Jason the date and the number of chairs to set up. And uh, on the opening reception night, I make sure the kitchen is up and ready because I've already alerted Sarah to talk to Ronnie about what we need. Uh, but you always have your fingers crossed. And then, uh, you know, once, once the dining comes through and the seats in here are all filled, I relax. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also a member of ArtScope. And uh, when I'm taking pictures of the exhibits and all the attendees, I usually see you at the back of the pack. Can you tell us why you do that? Yeah, well, first, let me thank you, because what you do is, is a really important job. Um, it, it gives me something to also put into Connected Living as the, um, you know, the, the post-opening reception promo that we also run. And, uh, it may, and Gretchen makes good use of all the pictures that you, um, that you pr uh, provide her with. Um, I'm also back there directing latecomers to available seats but I'm mostly counting the house, okay? <laughs> uh, I'm not happy if there are empty seats. You know, I like it when all the seats are, are taken and uh, where I really have to go out to the, uh, the annex and drag more chairs uh, into this place. Yeah, wow. that's basically why I'm back there. Yeah, I started taking pictures of every single uh, thing that was hung because I felt for those who couldn't actually come, at least they could see it on the screen. So. Right. You know, yeah. and uh, unfortunately, right before we closed down, I got a wide angle lens so I could get this big scope of the audience. <laughs> <laughs> and now I haven't used it in a year. So have, eventually. Have faith, have faith. Yeah, I'm hoping, right? <laughs> so um, what do you consider like a good number of attendees? We usually draw between 85 and 90. Um, at Joyce Gartrell's um, exhibit, uh, and Joyce had paintings, photography, her Zen tangles, her clothing. Uh, we had over 100 people here. Um, we had standees. We had people outside the, uh, the pack. We had people who came, saw the mob, and then left. So we probably had even more than 100, but 100 has been our tops. But uh, generally between um, 85 uh, and 90 is, I consider, a pretty good number. Yeah, I remember when I first started coming. And then to see the whole room filled, it was really very gratifying. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah, it definitely yeah. is. Yeah. Um, was there any show where the audience response surprised you? Yeah, we had um, an abstract painting show. Um, and I had stuff in there also. And I thought it was going to be a bummer. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a flop. Um, I figured the audience really didn't understand or appreciate, you know, what was up there. But uh, wow, I was wrong. It was a huge success. Um, I think um, the audience looking at the work, listening to the artist describe the various paintings um, gave the viewer a different view of abstract art. Um, you know, I'm not saying they all came around to liking it, but I think some of those who hated it uh, were now sort of middle of the road and maybe even having a greater appreciation uh, for it. Um, I remember um, um, one of our neighbors, you know, on our floor, mm -hmm. uh, Michelle and I are 
next door apartments. Um, she, uh, so I did a big painting and I put it on at the end of oh, our yeah. hall. Uh, I felt it needed something down there. And um, she um, never used the, the elevator except when she was taking her dog out, the dog preferred the elevator. So this is this was um, Norma, yeah, and she would walk up and down the stairs. Not bad for a ninety-four year old. And after I had the painting up, a few days later, she saw me, and then every day after that, she saw me. She saw something different in the painting, things I didn't see, quite frankly. But the beauty of of looking at an abstract painting is you bring a lot of yourself as a viewer to the painting. And uh, she would tell me, what, "I saw this, I saw that," and I thought, "Gee, that's." That's really terrific. <laughs> it was successful. It's the best you can expect, really. I think, I'm not sure if, did we have photographs in that show? Because I remember doing some abstract photographs once. Um, that wasn't, I hadn't, was that I hadn't completed that at right. the time. Yeah. I also just hung one down in the basement um, for the staff oh. on a wall that needed something desperately. Um, so we, we put one up uh, uh, down there. Yeah, I didn't even know I had abstract photographs until you asked for them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then I was looking through and I was like, oh, I think this fits. <laughs> yeah. um, are there any shows that stand out in your mind? Yeah, other than, um, uh, you know, the ones I mentioned, the, um, the Woodland Pond staff show yeah, in 2019, mm -hmm. um, when people saw the work and hearing the... Um, the staffers speak about their work. Um, I think everybody had a deeper appreciation of these people standing there, that there was more to them that we saw when they were taking care of us, when they were tending to our needs, whether it was in a dining room or um, in the health center. Um, I, th I, you know, they became really interesting people and at times you could hear a pin drop when they were talking. That's how moving some of them, uh, some of them were. It was really, uh, it was a riveting show and the show itself was a blockbuster. It was, I remember it. Yeah, um, I had planned to have another show of their work and we will um, as soon as things open up uh, down here. The Fiber Arts also was an interesting show. It revealed uh, the talent we have um, among um, many of the residents here that we didn't even know had that kind of talent. Um, um, and, and again, they became more than just somebody you said hello to as you pass them in the hallway. Um, that, that was uh, a winner. Another one that uh, comes to mind was, I had heard that Jane Johnston was a painter, okay? Jane Johnson might have mentioned it to me. I really don't remember. But anyway, Irene and I went up to her apartment and uh, she showed us her work, which was eh, sort of okay, but really didn't warrant a show of her own. And um, then I took a look at the long wall and it was a big painting there. And I said, uh, whose painting is that? It was really terrific. She said, uh, that's my uh, daughter Jennifer's. I said, oh. And I looked at another wall, and there were two smaller, beautifully done paintings, um, surrealistic style. And I said, um, who did those? Oh, that's my other daughter, Valerie. And I said, bing, we've got a show. <laughs> so we had um, the Johnstons, uh, mother and daughters. That was another terrific, terrific show. Yeah, I thought that was a terrific show, too. Do you think that the Woodland Pond residents appreciate what our scope brings to them? Yeah, maybe I'm prejudiced, but I think so without a doubt. Um, I think they're a very appreciative group. Um, they're intelligent. They're interesting. They've, they've lived interesting lives. They've done a lot of traveling. Um, they have great educations. Uh, they're hungry to learn even more with their eyes and with their ears. Um, um, and they tell me how much they appreciate what we've done. And throughout this pandemic, I've had others come up to me and say, well, when do you think we can have another show? You know, and my answer was, I'm hoping soon. Well, it's been a year now. Yeah. 
but I think we're getting closer. Um, the, 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 you know, the way I know is when we started ArtScope and we were having opening receptions, um, and we were supposed to start at that time at 7.30, but 7.30, there were still too many seats empty so far as I was concerned. So, okay, let's wait another five minutes. Hmm, let's wait another 10 minutes. Well, by now, everybody sitting there was getting a little antsy, so we would start, and then there'd be some stragglers coming in later. Now, 15 minutes before we even are supposed to start, the place is filled, yeah. okay, filled. And it's not the wine and the cookies that are bringing them here, but just the fact that they can gather with other residents, a form of socialization, and it's a place to learn and to experience what's up on the, on the walls. So, yeah, I, th I think, frankly, <laughs> it's the most anticipated events, at the opening receptions at Woodland Pond. I agree with you. And the comment that I hear afterwards um, is for people that really never were art enthusiasts, mm -hmm. they would say to me, they found it so fascinating to hear from the artists themselves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I have to agree with that. Yeah. yeah, they always said that. And I didn't understand why they made the painting or the photograph mm -hmm. or whatever. But it was interesting to hear how that person thought about it yeah. before they, you know, produced it. Mm -hmm. Now, did COVID-19 interrupt plants for the past year? Is that really a question? <laughs> it, uh, <laughs> it completely destroyed the plant. We had all of 2020 planned out, okay? We had all the shows planned out. And one of them was to include um, the SUNY art majors, okay? Mm -hmm. And I was invited to go over to SUNY. Apparently, um, they have their own studios or they share studios there. And um, they told me that, uh, you know, to choose the kind of work we wanted here and to let them know. I think the week I was supposed to come over here, we were locked down and they were locked down. Yeah. And now I think any contact I make with them is gonna have to be with all new people because I think they, I think all those students probably graduated yeah. um, by now. But um, yeah, it was, um, it was very disappointing. And what we had to do is where we would have had maybe eight shows, we've ended up with three. And here the photography show, when did we put this up in November? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's been up a while. Yeah, it's been up a long, long time. Right. So um, yeah, I'm, we're starting to get together some plans for, you know, when all this opens up. And I'm, and I'm hoping it's going to be very, very soon. So what does the future hold for ArtScope? Well, there are two parts to ArtScope. There's the, uh, the membership and the exhibits. Um, the membership concerns me because uh, we have lost through um, death, illness, or just retiring from, uh, from painting uh, more than half of those we started with. And that's been, it's really been um, distressing. Uh, there are just maybe four of us who are producing art and three of us are in our 90s already. Um, the terrific photography group is pretty intact. I guess you're all younger, <laughs> but um, that's been very steady. And, um, you know, I'm hoping it continues that way. Uh, we do have two recent arrivals, uh, one a painter um, and one a photographer. And I'm hoping that when we open up again, we'll have a, uh, a show of their, of their work. Yeah, I'm looking yeah. forward to seeing that. I'm, I'm looking, I'm definitely looking forward to it, yeah, yeah. So I'd like to just switch a little bit to you. Um, can you tell us a little bit about when you started with your art? Yeah, I guess I was in single digit age. <laughs> um, and I guess like a lot of people, I was copying from, you know, the comic books. Um, but then I started spending more time out in the street, you know, playing ball than, than doing any kind of drawing. Um, at about 16 or 17, uh, I started painting uh, in oils. And um, 
uh, that uh, continued on and off for, for a few years. And I thought about being a painter. I had this romantic notion of a starving artist, you know, um, at least for a while I had that notion. But um, um, while I was going to college, I, uh, a friend and I had a one room studio in a fire trap on the Bowery. Fire trap. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> And I graduated from college uh, with a BBA um, after having worked um, in a chemical plant that previous summer, getting $60 a week as a laborer. Now with a degree, I got a job for $30 a week, <laughs> okay? <laughs> um, and we, we married, that, I got married that same year, fortunately to a woman who was making $50 a week, <laughs> um, all in the same year. And um, uh, so I really had, at that point, I had really no time to indulge a hobby. I was putting in too much time uh, working. Um, but then, you know, after starting, and particularly after starting my own marketing communications company, which, you know, you didn't have hours at all, you just worked until everything was finished. So I didn't paint for another 50 years um, until we moved to uh, New Jersey. And then, and then I became a very serious painter. At that point, had you already retired? Yeah, yeah. Um, when, we moved, when we moved to New Jersey, yes, I, I had uh, retired. Um, but having a hobby made retirement a lot easier. Um, I've spoken to people who told me they were going to retire. And I said, if you don't have something to retire to, don't retire because you're going to be unhappy and you're going to make whoever you're living with miserable. So, you know, that's part of the advice I've ever given out to anybody. But I started painting again because we had a loft upstairs to made it into, you know, quasi studio. And I started painting uh, in acrylics like to uh, move on to your creative process a little bit. So uh, how do you start a painting? Um, well, first, you sort of have to come up with the idea. But many times when you're working abstractly, all you have to do is stand in front of the canvas, put paint on a brush and just start applying it. Okay. I generally work on uh, canvas or composition board, which is uh, a brown surface. Um, I can get a two by four for like five dollars, so it's it's pretty cheap and it's easy to work on. Then I then I gesso it with white white gesso. And uh, if I'm doing an abstract, which I've been doing more of lately, I just start in the middle, and then work my way out. Um, you know, if you if I'm doing a portrait, it's a whole other story. But um, <coughs> lately, I've broken away from the squares, and I'm doing shaped canvases. Um, where I'll take the, uh, um, the, the gessoed board down to the wood shop, and with a jigsaw, I start cutting the shape. And that's been uh, refreshing, and uh, I'm, I'm enjoying that. Yes, I noticed in one of your jigsaws that you had a little round circle that said for rent. <laughs> <laughs> no. I was going to stick a picture of my dog in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I did one, and, I, um, and that one I drilled three holes, and I just had an idea of what to put in there, but I didn't get around to it, and so I put space available <laughs> in all three. Yeah, I thought it was cute. <laughs> but thanks for looking. <laughs> I, yeah, I noticed. I always pay attention. Are there painters whose work has in influenced other people? Yeah, oh, various painters, too, too numerous to mention, uh, and various categories. There's Impressionism, Neo-Impressionism, Expressionism, Abstract Expressionism, Cubism, Cubism, Futurism, the California Bay Area painters. Um, so it's, you know, you sort of steal a little from all. Um, but no matter your attraction to them and what you get out of them, what you end up with is essentially yours. That's it. Okay. Do you enjoy working alone? Uh, not necessarily. Self-critiquing is, is difficult, okay? Um, you know, you're, you're crit criticizing yourself and, and, and the work. 
but uh, and it's yours, okay? Um, I miss not having a teacher who can give me some unvarnished criticism, but somebody that you really respect. So um, yeah, that's the, that's the one thing I miss here, but I have a wife and I have daughters who do give me feedback and a lot of times I listen to what they have to say. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know when a painting is finished? <laughs> um, well, you have nothing more to add to it, okay? Or you're just tired of working on it. Um, a lot of times you're not really sure it's finished, or if you think it's finished, you know, you'll put it in a frame, you'll hang it up, and uh, then you look at it and, well, maybe I could add something. I did, I did a painting. Um, that I thought it was different from anything I've done. Uh, this was years ago, and I liked it. Um, and I hung it up, and then I started looking at it. And two years after, I said, you know what? It's boring. And I started working on it, and I ended up with one of the best paintings I've ever done. So, you know, if you, if you say to an abstract painter, how do you know it's done? Well, you're not, you're not always sure. You can always put in another color, change the shape. You can do a lot of things with them. You know. Do you think something happens in your experiences that influences you to add that then? Sometimes. Yeah, it could. It could. You know, lying in bed two o'clock in the morning, you get some great ideas. Yeah. You know. And if you don't pay attention, you forget them, right? <laughs> <laughs> if you don't write them down. <laughs> right. That's what happens to me. Um, how do you react when you finish a painting? Um, how do I react? Um, generally, I'm happy with them, okay? Um, and I'll hang them up, okay? I'll frame them and hang them up. Uh, but more and more, I found in the past year, I've been working on paintings, and I haven't finished them, and I put them away, um, and I haven't been happy with them. And then you pull them out, and maybe you can do a little bit more on them. Or, you know, you just probably leave it to your heirs to discard. <laughs> <laughs> How has uh, COVID-19 affected your painting? It hasn't. I've been painting throughout the whole pandemic. In fact, I've been doing some of my best work, and I've been doing a lot of work. Um, so to that degree, um, it hasn't. But uh, you're still, uh, well, I did do three paintings about the pandemic that I have in the show here, one showing the masks on the the handle of the of the door. So I remember when I walk out that, hey, you got to put these on. And then I did two of the deliveries on the shelf. Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah, and they were, they were realistic right. paintings, which I don't usually do anymore. But yeah, so to that degree, it was on my mind. You know, that's not, that's not surprising to me because I have a cousin who paints and I have never seen her so prolific as she has been in this yeah, last year. Yeah, well, you, you can't go anywhere. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So, um, do you plan to slow down? God, I hope not. You know, I still have a lot to learn. It's only been 20 years that I'm a serious painter. Uh, so I feel I've got a long road to travel. Um, I'm looking forward to the next 20, okay? Ima imagine a show when I'm 110, okay? And I want you to photograph it. Okay. You promise? I promise. You heard that. <laughs> I'll be 92, but okay, I'll try. I'll try. In this place, you're still a kid. Um, I put together a slideshow um, with images of past opening receptions. And uh, it's a way to reminisce about past events um, and a way to look forward to those that are yet to come. Um, and it'll give new residents a picture of the creativity that flourishes at Woodland Pond, which would be a great slogan for Oscope. Yeah, yeah it, it is. <laughs> um, now, for the viewers who are going to watch this, um, see if you can connect the image with who you think created it. Okay. Um, now, the um, um, this portion of our interview uh, is over, but uh, the inimitable uh, Jason Irish uh, will be controlling uh, the slideshow at another location. So he can see us, but he can't hear us. Um, he can't hear what I'm saying. So I'm going to wave as a signal to Jason 
to start the show. Okay, Jason. Thank you, Al. <laughs> Thank you. I want to say too.